Colorado's Front Range is full of iconic views, even where the land is regenerating after large wildfires. Within this big scenery is a small forest problem. All the small trees are increasing wildfire risk along the Front Range. So to help our forests, we're turning to the plains. Out east, where the railroad tracks follow Highway 85 north into Wyoming, a family-owned sawmill is using technology to help lower wildfire risk and solve this small forest problem, board by board. My name is Andy Hines, and I'm the owner of Golden West Pine Mills here in Alt, Colorado. The main reason behind what I'm doing here is to try and utilize uh, small diameter timber between six to 12 inches in diameter. That traditionally has been a difficult size for the industry over the years. We're able to address the overstocked issue of this small diameter timber that we have here in Colorado. When these small trees are left on the landscape in large numbers, they become tender that ignite quickly and add fuel to large wildfires like the Cameron Peak and East Troublesome Fires of 2020. If we look at the Front Range, we probably have at bare, bare minimum hundreds of thousands of acres that need to be treated. At one point, it was 1.5 million. And uh, unfortunately, some of those acres were treated for us by the wildfire. These are uncharacteristic fires, too. They burn very hot. The idea that we could have a plant along the Front Range that would pretty much be able to pay the full value of getting that wood off the landscape seems very appealing. So currently we're using um, ponderosa pine and lodgepole pine um, from along the front range here in Northern Colorado, both green standing and beetle kill. We can also use dug fir, but maybe most importantly, uh, we can utilize burnt timber uh, from a forest fire. If it's not damaged too much inside, that's one of the unique aspects, I think, um, that this uh, product offers. Sometimes a lot of other processes will uh, turn away from using burnt logs. Andy has invested in expanding his traditional sawmill to adopt a process that uses radio frequency technology. I got started in the business back in uh, 1992, um, building kitchen cabinets, kind of progressed uh, more architectural millwork products, and then, uh, then backtracking into the sawmill business. About uh, 2014, 2015, I stumbled across a research paper that was done by the U.S. Forest Service's uh, Forest Products Lab. The paper was based on research that they had done in the early 70s. It was estimating that we would start to see a severe uh, decrease in lumber for wide width use. So they came up with this process that they called EGAR. EGAR is an acronym for edge, glue, and rip. It's a very simple concept. You process that timber into material that is then glued into a panel and then re-ripped into whatever width lumber you may need. We are going to glue up a panel that's going to be approximately 50 inches wide. These are all three inch wide staves that we're using. It's a very narrow material. Hydraulic pressure. And then also edge pressure will be applied hydraulically and that will clamp the press from edge to edge. So radial frequency is flowing through this bottom plate to the top plate. And it's gonna take 120 seconds to cure this particular panel. I could put this in perspective really fast. If you were to do that manually, a really good day is maybe one to two panels a day. And Andy's doing that in a couple of minutes. So this is a game changer in terms of productivity. The original intent for EGAR was to be used in uh, construction grade lumber. Our initial testing has um, shown us that the material itself is straighter, it's flatter, and it's stronger than traditional uh, solid sawn material. Uh, it has a host of other uh, applications such as uh, architectural panels, panels for projects, say cabinetry, display type products, uh, backboards. One of the things we're the most excited about is being able to use it into say 
tongue and groove paneling or shiplap paneling. While working with the Colorado State University Civil Engineering Test Lab, Andy made another discovery. Something that we had no idea that was a possibility is um, using it in the construction of cross-laminated timber. The uh, CLT industry is really starting to take off. So this radio frequency press can do the same thing on a much smaller scale, of course, but at a fraction of the cost. The mill has received grant support through the CSFS Wood Biomass Program and the U.S. Forest Service Community Wood Innovation Program to continue exploring EGAR technology. I nominated Andy for Partner of the Year because I think he did something very innovative that will help our field foresters do their work. It will also help the U.S. Forest Service because they have the same issues along the front range. Where we're taking a resource that's underutilized and turning it into effectively a value-added product is what we need to see more of, not only along the front range, but throughout the state. I think we all are good at something and this kind of just resonated with me. There's a lot of potential with uh, projects like this, not only for myself, but in our industry where you can utilize what we have, our natural resource here in Colorado, and uh, make it a benefit for not only the environment, but for the local community. Colorado State Forest Service has been a very strong partner in helping achieve those goals for me.